The new consumption event started and with it came a few updates. Let's take a look at them and talk about any implications they may have on our gameplay. The first mail, called Chinese Valentine's Day Preview, tells us which events are currently active. There's nothing much of note here so let's skim through it. A new general, Xiao Yun, has been released. Purchasing the fifth ladder pack gives you a chance to get him. Barbarian's Invasion is back. The King's Party event lets us know all the wonderful new schemes Ebony devs have concocted to pilfer your money. At Cake Level 4, players receive the Bourbon Bracers. We'll talk about the Bourbon set in another mail. At Cake Level 8, players will get the Consul's Toga. At Cake 10, players get the Colossus Castle decoration, an epic historic general chest, and the Bourbon Partisan. The rest of the mail is just an announcement of the usual events that appear with consumption. So we can skip that and talk about those cake purchases. First, let's examine the Consul's Toga, which can be previewed in the Forge. The Consul's Toga provides a boost to crafting speed and an increase to the amount of gold you receive from Gold Levy. This is quite possibly the worst piece of equipment in the game. The bottleneck in crafting gear is always material and never speed ups. If this was a 15% reduction to the materials required in crafting, it would be useful. But it's not, is it? To make a terrible item worse, because you have to craft this piece of gear after obtaining the scrolls, it negates any crafting bonus you might receive from the gear. You'll spend 30 or so days of speed ups and a lot of materials crafting this piece of gear, and then it will take you crafting another dozen or two pieces of gear before this bonus actually starts saving you some speed ups. Even then, the speed ups will be inconsequential as crafting speed ups are rarely in short supply. What about the gold levy part of that piece? Well, if Levy was a main source of gold, that part might be useful. It's not, and hasn't been, since the introduction of Vikings into the game. These days, there are many far superior sources of obtaining gold that the amount we receive from levies is insignificant in comparison. You won't get much value from this increase at all. Even if I decided to purchase my way to a high cake level and I obtained this along the way, I don't think I'd bother crafting this piece. It's that bad. The Colossus Cake decoration is valuable as it is a permanent decoration that does provide bonuses to either your ground or mounted troops depending on which one you have. Colossus Genesis provides 10% research speed and the castle can be activated to boost marching mounted troop attack and HP by 10% while debuffing enemy ranged troop defense by 10%. The other option, Colossus Apocalypse, provides the same 10% research speed and has an activation bonus that buffs marching, ground attack, and HP by 10%, while debuffing enemy troop HP by 10%. The decoration is valuable, yes, but is it Cake 10 valuable? Is anything in this game worth getting to Cake 10? These are questions you would have to ask yourself, I suppose. Let's talk about the last important part of the King's Party Cake, the new bourbon set. Just when you thought Ebony was done sucking your money with civilization gear, more comes out. Of course it does. Did you expect anything else? I've heard so many people say they will be done spending when they get those last pieces of civilization gear. Guys, it doesn't end. The nature of this game right now is that whatever you buy, it's temporary. You bought a general that seems like it's going to be a top general. In a few months, it's replaced by someone else that just got released. Oh, you purchased all the civilization pieces to make sure you have the best gear possible? Ebony is going to devalue your purchases in due time by adding newer sets and features that force you to continue purchasing to keep up or lose your edge. There are games out there that I can't wait to hear about new updates because they are certain to increase my enjoyment of the game. That's not so with Ebony. With this game, no news is good news. The second updates come out, you can be sure they are not in the best interest of the players. They are just new ways to trick you into spending your money. So let's take a look at Ebony's newest money grab, the Bourbon Set. 
Owning the full set will boost your mounted troop attack, defense, and HP by 15%. Remember that this full set bonus is active even when the pieces are spread out across multiple generals. The two pieces of bourbon that are currently in the game are the Bourbon Bracers and the Bourbon Partisan. The Bracers, which take the ring slot on a general, are the easiest to obtain. They boost your mounted attack and defense and increase your march size while debuffing the enemy's ranged troop attack. Ideally, this piece would be placed on a mounted PvP general. The Bourbon Partisan will take the weapon slot on a general. It provides a big boost to mounted troop attack with another boost to mounted attack when marching. The Partisan also debuffs enemy ranged troop defense and HP. Similar to the Bracers, this is likely most effectively placed on a PvP mounted general. The Zaoyun male gives us some info about the newest general. He comes fully awakened and looks to be centered around mounted troops. His skill, Special Skill Undefeatable General, yes, that's the actual name, increases ground and mounted attack and mounted HP by 30% when attacking. His specialties look really solid, so he's going to be a contender for the top. Keep in mind that just because he's strong doesn't mean he's the right choice for you. While he would undoubtedly be excellent as an assistant general for anyone, as a main general, you will have great difficulty in ascending him, which doesn't make him a good choice for almost anyone out there except the top 1% of spenders. Finally, let's move on to the final mail called New Features of the Latest Version. The newest generals to be ascended are listed in the first part of this mail. Hooray to the ascension of Minamoto. That's one I was looking forward to seeing. Electra is still going to be one of the top choices to ascend as you can get her fairly easily from relics, but Minamoto is even more accessible by being a tavern general, so he might just be the top or one of the top choices for a PvP archer general now, unless you dump the equivalent of a house mortgage onto the game. We've talked about the terrible toga, so we can skip that, and move to the improvements of event reward section. The server gifts are those rare gifts that you get on your wall when the server reaches a certain threshold of spending. You can check out where your server is at when you claim those gifts that pop up on your wall. My server is at level 20. The other daily reward that was improved was the bonus from offering. If there was an improvement, it was an underwhelming one. Hopefully I'm just missing something here and someone in the comments will point out that there's some incredible improvement I didn't notice. The mail also suggests that Server War, World Boss, and King's Path rewards were improved also. The last part of the mail just lets us know that there's now a tie-breaking system for some of the event rankings in the game. I'm so glad that they've worked hard on such an important change for the game, instead of all the unimportant things like servers dying out, finding a balance between heavy spending and low spending, or actual bugs in the game. Can you sense my sarcasm there? Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you liked what you saw, please consider hitting the like button and checking out other videos on the Miser's Guide to Ebony. I'll see you in the next video.